Hope that you're all doing well. Hope your families are all fine and all that. So what I'm going to do today is I want to go over the questions that are going to be on your final test for cycle four this week. And it's only going to be dealing with two figures. It's going to be dealing with a cone and it's going to be dealing with a pyramid, just finding surface area and finding volume of both cone and a pyramid. So we'll start with the more complicated one, just to help you guys out and just to get it out of the way to begin with to a pyramid, right? So we have a pyramid, right? Okay, always has triangles on the faces. And then we have the bottom portion. And then we have all the side triangles, right? And two things are going to be on it, surface area and volume. Just always remember, the surface area is always how much is on the outside of the figure, and the volume is always how much is on the inside of any three-dimensional figure. So the first thing we're going to find is we want to find the surface area of this pyramid, right? And to find the surface area, we have the formula, which is going to be B plus a half PL. And again, remember, B represents the area of the base, P represents the perimeter of the base, and L represents the length of the pyramid. So in this case, let me give you the measurements that we need. So let's say that the length of this base, we'll call it four inches, right? And we'll call the width of it two inches. And we'll call the length of this pyramid, let's call it five inches. Okay? So we know that this base, the length of the base is four inches, the width of the base is two inches, and the length of the pyramid is five. So we know that L is five, right? It's right here. We know that L equals five. Right? So now let's figure out what B is and what P is. So B represents, again, the area of the base. So in this case, when we want to find the area of the base, we want to find out how much is actually there on the base, right? So since the base is a rectangle, you know that the formula to find area of a rectangle is length times width, right? And since the length is, here, we'll write this out over here. We know that the length is four, right? We know that the width is two. And so since we have that, length is four, right? It's gonna be four times width is two, and we know that four times two is eight, right? So we know that the base is eight. So we know that the length is five, right? We know that the base is eight. And now the last thing we have to do is we have to find the perimeter of the base, right? Again, we know that the area of the base is eight because we did length times width, four times two. We know that the length is five. And now to find the perimeter of the base, it's the easiest thing to be able to do. To find the perimeter of the base, all you're going to do is whenever you're dealing with perimeter, you're dealing with what's on the outside, right? And when we're talking about the rectangle, we're talking about everything that's there on the outside, right? And since it's perimeter, we're going to add them all up. So we know that this side is four, right? We know that that side is two. Can't forget about the back side, which is also going to be four. And we can't forget the right, the left side, because that's also going to be two. And again, we have the two, which is this side. We have the four, which is here, the two there, the four there. Since we're talking about perimeter, we're going to add up all four of those sides, right? We're going to add up the four plus two plus four plus two. And again, we're just adding them just because it's perimeter. Whenever you're dealing with perimeter, you just add everything up that's on the base. And that's why we're not dealing with the five, because the five's not on the base. So four plus two is six. Six plus four is ten. Ten plus two is twelve. You know that the perimeter is 12. Because all we did, we just added up all four sides of the base. 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, which gave us all 12, right? To find the area of the base, we just did the length times width, which was 4 times 2, which gave us 8. And the length was the easy part. Length was just the 5. Because now once you have all of those numbers, now it's just substituting it into the formula, which is going to make our life a lot easier. So now, let's just substitute everything we know, right? We know that the base is 8, right? Plus half. We know that the perimeter of the base is 12. So we have 12. 
and we know that the length is 5. You know, the length is 5. And all I did again, I just substituted terms. We know that the area of the base, B was 8, B was 8, plus a half. We know that the perimeter of the base, P was 12. And we know that the length of the pyramid was 5, right? Length was 5. And once you have this, before you deal with addition, let's just multiply the terms that we have. We want to multiply everything in the parentheses. So let's bring down the 8, let's bring down the half. 12 times 5 gives us 60, right? And all I did to get 60, I did 12 times 5 to give us 60. Once you have this again, before you add, you always have to multiply. And just think of it this way, a half of 60 is 30, right? I got the 30 because a half of 60 is 30. If you even want to think of it as a different way, think of it as, let me just put it here on the side, think of it as 60 divided by 2, right? Which gives us 30. Because whenever you have a half of a number, you just divide that number by 2. 60 divided by 2 gives us 30. Half of 60 is 30. And the last thing we have to do, let's just add them up. 8 plus 30 gives us 38. We have inches. And surface area means that it's going to be squared. So it's 38 inches squared. And again, 38 inches squared, since it's a surface area, is how much is on the outside of that figure. Hardest part again, it's not solving it because the solving is the easy part. It's just figuring out the area of the base and the perimeter of the base. Which again, when it's the perimeter of the base, just add up all the sides on the base to figure out the area of the base. You're going to multiply the length times width when it's a rectangle in this case. So that right there was for surface area of the base of a pyramid, I mean, I'm sorry. Now we're going to end up finding the volume of a pyramid which after finding the surface area, everything else becomes a lot easier to figure out, right? So you're gonna have one question that's gonna ask you to find surface area or perimeter of a pyramid. You're gonna have another question that's gonna ask you to find volume of a pyramid, right? And again, don't forget all the formulas, guys, that are on the formula sheet that is on Pearson. And I'm always updating them to make sure that all these formulas are included. So now, while we're dealing with the pyramid, we know that the formula to find the volume of a pyramid is always a third area of the base times height, right? So again, capital B is the area of the base. We know that H represents the height. So I have to give you a height, and since we're talking about a height, you always need a right angle. So let's say that the height of this is 6 feet, right? And let's say that this length here, let's make that 5 feet. And let's make the width 3 feet. Again, the easy part is done for us. All you need are two variables. We know that the height is 6. And again, we know it's 6 because if you have a right angle, it's telling you how high it is. So we know that the height is 6. To find the area of the base, it's exactly what you just did before. The base here is a rectangle. So since you want to find the area of that base, you want to find the area of that base, what we're going to do is we're going to do length times width, like we did before, right? And we're going to do 5 is the length, we're going to do 3 is the width, so all it is, it's just going to be 5, right? Because the length is 5, times 3, which is the width. Again, all I did, length was 5, width was 3. Since we're finding the area of the base, we're going to do length times width, 5 times 3, which gives us 15. So we know that the base is 15, right? We know that the base is 15. We know that the height is 6. So now all we have to do is just substitute it into the formula. So let's bring down the third. We know that the area of the base is 15, right? We know that the height is 6. So you have that. Before we deal with the third, again, let's deal with multiplication, multiplying the terms in parentheses, bring down the third. We know that 15 times 6 is going to end up giving us 90. Okay? And all I got 90 from is just doing 15 times 6. And our last step here is just doing a third of 90. And again, whenever you see a third of 90, just think. Think of 90 divided by 3, because since it's a third, it's 90 divided by 3, 
and 90 divided by 3 is 30. So a third of 90 is going to end up giving us 30. And since we're dealing with feet, it's going to end up being 30 feet. And since it's volume, it's going to be cubed. So our final answer for volume is 30 feet cubed. Again, the cube because it's volume, and the 30 came from us doing a third of 90. So 90 divided by 3, which gave us 30. So in this pyramid, 30 would represent how much goes on the inside. You're going to have one of these on the test, finding volume of a pyramid. You're going to have one on finding surface area of a pyramid. You're going to have then two dealing with the cone. And the cone is the ones that are much, much simpler. You're going to end up finding the surface area of a cone, and you're going to end up finding then the volume of a cone. So now dealing with a cone. This will be a lot easier. And again, don't forget the formulas. So you have a cone. Okay. You have a cone right there. Where to find that cone, to find surface area. Let's start with that. We know that the formula for finding surface area of a cone is going to end up being pi r squared plus pi r l, right? So in order to find the surface area of a cone, r always stands for the radius. So when you're dealing with the radius, you're dealing with the circle. So let's say that the radius here is going to end up being 3 inches. Again, just simple terms to deal with. And what l represents is how long this cone is. So in this case, we'll do that the length of the cone is 8 inches. So again, looking at that, to find the surface area of this cone, we need a radius, which we have, so that's the radius, and we need a length of the cone, which in this case is 8. And now once you're here, it's just substituting everything in, right? So we know it's going to end up being pi. We know that r in this case is 3, so it's going to end up being 3 squared plus pi. Okay. We know that again, the radius is 3, and we know that L in this case is 8. So again, all I did, I just substituted everything. We got pi, the radius was 3, right? squared plus pi. We know that the radius again was 3, and we know that the length of the cone was 8. And once you have that, again, always deal with everything in the parentheses, but even before that, let's deal with the square, right? So we know that 3 squared doesn't mean 3 times 2. 3 squared means 3 times 3. So 3 times 3 is going to give us 9. So we have 9 pi, right? Plus. Now let's take care of this part over here with the parentheses. We have 3 times 8, which gives us 24. And don't forget the pi again. Because again, whenever you have two terms in parentheses that are next to each other in parentheses, it's always multiplication when nothing is between. So again, just to see, 3 squared meant 3 times 3. 3 times 3 was 9. Brought down the pi. Brought down the plus. We know that 3 times 8 was 24. And then we brought down the pi again. So once you have this, it's just making it a lot easier for you guys. Just wherever you see pi, just substitute it with 3.14, right? So we have 9 times 3.14, bring down the plus 24 times 3.14. Again, just so you guys follow with it, it was 9, 3.14, plus 24 times 3.14. And once you have this, now it's just multiplying everything out. Let me just grab my calculator. So we have that 9, sorry, we have that 9 times 3.14 gives us 28.26, right? So that's 28.26 plus, now we're going to end up doing 24 times 3.14, which gives us 75.36. And then when you want to add all this up, it's as simple as just adding them up. It's going to be 28.26 plus 75.36, which gives us 103.62. And again, let me just show you where that all came from. So we have 9 times 3.14 plus 
plus 24 times 3.14 from the pies. We did 9 times 3.14, which gave us 28.26. We did 24 times 3.14, which gave us 75.36. When you add them up, it gave us 103.62. Can't forget the units, inches. And since it's surface area, it's squared. 103.62 inches squared for the surface area. It's how much is on the outside. And our last example is going to end up being finding the volume of a cone. Okay. Which again, very simple. So now, to find the volume, for the formula for volume, and let, let me get rid of these terms too. To find the volume of a cone, the formula for volume of a cone is going to end up being V is equal to a third pi r squared h. Right? And again, it's a third pi r squared h because pi r squared h represents the volume of a cylinder. And since a cone is three times smaller than a cylinder, it's a third. But again, that's just going over where it's coming from. So again, we have the third, we have the pi, we need a radius, which in this case, let's make the radius four. Right? Let's make it four meters. And we know we need a height. And again, the height's gonna be on the inside. Right? And let's make the height of this cone, let's make it nine meters. Right? So we know that the radius is four, which is what we need, and we know that the height is nine. Right? And once you have that again, it's all just substituting. So we know that the four is the radius. We know that the nine is the height, right? Now let's just substitute everything we have. We have a third, we have pi, we know that the radius again is four, can't forget the squared, and we know that the height in this case is nine as well, right? So you have all that. So again, it was a third, it was pi, the radius was four, squared, and then the height was nine. So once you have all this again, before you do anything else, before you multiply, before you multiply, you have to deal with the exponent. So we have a third, bring down. We have pi, bring down, all right? We have four squared, and again, four squared means four times four. So four times four is 16, right? And bring down the nine. So, so far we have that. Again, brought down the third, brought down the pi, four times four, four squared was 16. And then we had 9, right? So now once you have this, before dealing with all this, we can just multiply those terms out. So bring down the third, bring down the pi. We know that 16 times 9 is going to end up giving us 144. Okay? And again, all I did to get 144 was 16 times 9. Okay? Sorry, just thinking, overthinking for a sec. So we had a third times pi times 144. Now in order to actually deal with all of this, two ways you can do this. So if you wanna deal with the third, you can deal with the third, which is what I would do just to make my life easier. If you wanna deal with the pi, you can deal with the pi. If you wanna just, if you wanna multiply all of it out together, you can do that as well. What I'm gonna do is, First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take care of the third of 144. And since we're dealing with a third of 144, again, that just means you're going to do 144 divided by 3. And 144 divided by 3 is going to end up giving us 48, right? And just to show you where that 48 came from, all I did was a third of 144. So 144 divided by 3 gives us 48, right? Because all I did was, I took a third of 144. A third of 144. 144 divided by three gave us that 48. Can't forget the pi, right? And once you have that, don't forget. Whenever you see pi, you can look at it as 3.14. And once you have that, it's 48 times 3.14 will give us our final answer. So 
48 times 3.14 is going to give us 150.72. 150.72. And don't forget the units. It's going to end up being meters. And since it's volume, it's going to end up being meters cubed. There's our final answer. 150.78 meters cubed. And again, just to show you guys, the trickiest part that people will have with this, the third of 144. So the 144 we got from doing 16 times 9, which gave us 144. When you have a third of 144, it just means do 144 divided by 3. And when we did that, it gave us 48. Because a, a third of four, 144 gives us 48. We had 48 pi, so we just did 48 times 3.14, which gave us 150.72. And again, since it's volume, 150.72 is how much would fit inside of that cone. Just remember, you're going to have six questions. One that's going to ask you what a surface area represent. Again, surface area is what's on the outside of a figure. A question on volume. Volume is how much is on the inside of a figure. You're going to have a question that's going to ask you to find surface area of a pyramid. You're going to have a question that's going to ask you to find volume of a pyramid. You're going to have one that's going to ask you to find surface area of a cone and one for volume of a cone. Just make sure you guys are referencing all the formulas. Make sure you guys are using everything that you need to online, the videos, anything to help you out with the test. Again, it will be your last test for cycle four, so please take it seriously, guys. If you need any help, feel free to reach out to me. Take care.